The store is open. This is Jennifer in charge of the store. She'd like you to think she's in charge of the store, but actually Chadwick is. <laughs> this is Chadwick. <laughs> Decaf coffee. Decaf coffee in the back, refreshments. We're having a raffle. All of these wonderful items will be raffled. And if you're unlucky, you'll get a bottle of wine. If you're lucky, you'll get one of the Joe Mora items. We accept donations up front. Um, I want to mention that Easter on the farm is April 8th, and there's flyers back there. April 15th in Monterey is Joe Mora Day. And Peter will talk a little bit about that. And then the Ag History Project Spring Fling is April 22nd. Spring Roundup. Spring Roundup. And it's a wonderful dinner that benefits Ag History Project. And you're all invited. And the flyers are back there for that as well. So welcome to our, oh, and there are some Yosemite Joe Mora books in front that Peter's selling and he did the foreword and he'll autograph that for you. Yeah, he, he also wrote this book that's in the raffle and he can sign that for you as well. Uh, welcome to our first lecture of 2023. Pre-COVID we did several of these lectures and really enjoyed them. And then we've of course been shut down for a while and Bob and I are gonna try and do a few more this spring, but if we could get past floods, plagues, fires, I mean, gosh. But we wanna keep doing this because there are some amazing historic stories to be told from the Pajaro Valley. So um, Ag History Project's mission is to honor and promote knowledge about agriculture on the Central Coast, both past and present. And for those of you who don't know, we here at the museum and the property and the 50 or so tractors are a 501c3 that is completely independent of the fair. So the fairgrounds is a 14th district ag association. That's a different entity. We lease this property from them and we try to get along well with them and be good uh, residents on their property, but we are a separate 501c3, and I say that because people get confused about Ag History versus the Santa Cruz Fair Foundation, that's another 501c3, and their mission is to raise funds, they did the crab feed and other things, and their mission is to raise funds to do maintenance, get tractors, do fairgrounds, uh, kinds of work. Ours is about this Ag History Museum and the um, other activities that we do here. Russell, Russell and Vicki had how many kids today? 20 kids came through today and, and I heard him talking about what an icebox is versus a refrigerator. I mean, where do kids learn that except from Russell here? I mean, this is really a wonderful place here, as I'm sure you've all seen. Now to Joe Mora. About 30 years ago, I met um, a saddle maker in Salinas. His name was Bob Matson, And uh, he and I became fast friends. And there's a couple pictures of him back there, one with Diane Cooley. He came a few years ago and spoke about saddles with Diane. And Diane had her mother's saddle. This is Diane's mother's saddle. And she had her, and that's a Visalia, and her own Olson Olti saddle. And Bob and she carried on. I just said hello, and they never stopped talking for an hour and a half once, once we got that going. But Bob introduced me to all cowboy cultural things that were Central Coast related. And he said, you have to do Joe Mora. You have to get Budgie Budgie Cottontail. You have to fall in love with pictures like this and the book. And he said, you have to get the 1952 Arizona Magazine, September, because it has those cowboy prints that are framed back there. That's my frame. And there's eight of the prints. And you have to, so you have to buy two copies because they're printed back to back. 
So to, to do a display, you have to buy two of those copies, and they're getting harder and harder to find. So it's always about scrounging around for Joe Morris stuff. And Sandy wishes that she had kept, she had a sweetheart of the rodeo print that her grandma had, and she's sorry that she sold that. <laughs> And the amazing story today is the milk bottles, Carmel Dairy was a big part of Joe Mora's life, and the, Peter will talk about the panels that were there. But I have a milk bottle, and that's got a story. And then Peter walked over and said, well, you know, you've got the milk carton in here. I've looked in there 15 times for Joe Mora stuff. And he walked right over and saw a Joe Mora, the artwork on the milk carton in there is Joe Mora artwork. So, wow, it's just amazing. Anyway, I'm a devotee. Um, Bob Matson passed away a year ago, April, and as you all know, so we lost Diana about that same time. But before he left, he introduced me to Peter Hiller. And Peter now is one of my heroes, and he's here to talk about Joe Mora, and he's probably the most knowledgeable person mm -hmm. around. So, around, yeah. I think of, of Peter as the Johnny Appleseed of Joe Moore. So welcome, Peter. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, Mary and I have been talking about this for years, without exaggeration. Um, certainly, as Mary rattled off, we've had numerous interruptions in the last few years. Um, but I'm thrilled that it finally has happened. And I am thrilled to have an audience like this. Um, I will express a little frustration, and well, you can decide how you want to take it. Oftentimes, I talk about Joe Moray in Monterey County, and he is well represented in terms of his artwork in Monterey County. Monday of this week, I talked about him in San Francisco, and he is well represented in the San Francisco Bay Area. But I have been frustrated by not being able to identify more of his career in Santa Cruz County and San Benito. Um, so I want you to prove me wrong. Now, I can tell you, just by starting tonight, um, I look over here and I see Legacy of the Vaquero. Well, that was Joe to a T. Um, so well represented. The exhibit over here with all items Western Joe could have told you probably who made every single item that's over there in that display. And then there's the milk, or milk carton. Interestingly enough, the milk cartons are harder to find than the milk bottles. Uh, people had a tendency to take care of a bottle and I think worry about it not breaking. So if they had the foresight to put it up on a shelf, lots of times it got wrapped up and it was hidden away and is, was preserved. However, the milk cartons, step on them, throw them away. You know, so they disappeared right away. So that's a valuable piece there. Um, so already, there are connections. And um, just to give me a sense, how many of you came here tonight with a working knowledge of who Joe Mora is? You just raise your hands. Okay, so getting close to a good third. Okay, good. Well, my endeavor tonight is to introduce you to Joe Mora and to just give you a sense of who he was and then maybe collectively we can decide how to embrace him more in Santa Cruz County. Um, I will tell you I have approached the Art Museum downtown and they actually didn't close the door on me. They said, oh, we are aware of who Joe Mora is. Um, we'll think about it. So. Maybe some of you can turn the screws. Um, so, go right again. Thank you. Um, right off the bat, Joe Mora was a family man. Uh, he had a son and a daughter. In his lap is his son, Joe Jr. Um, in his wife, Grace's lap, is their daughter, Patty. Um, they were a very tight family. Um, this picture was taken once they moved to, down to Carmel. That would be where they lived for the last third of Joe Mora's life. He was born in 18, um, 1876, and he died in 1947. 
from about 1920 to 1947, he lived on the Monterey Peninsula, so either in Carmel or then eventually in Pebble Beach. So he actually uh, built a studio in Pebble Beach. Okay. Now I want you to picture a gentleman uh, who embraces his family to the extent that whenever there were celebrations, a birthday, an anniversary, even holidays like Easter, Joe would create what they called Bologna. And this is a Bologna for Joe Jr. in 1946. And this is typical of what Joe would do at the end of the year in celebration of the birthday and then the next year coming forward. So all of the little vignettes <coughs> that you see here are little cartoons about different things that happened for Joey during the previous year. Now how cute is that? Um, and then the text of course coincides with it as well. Um, and that's very, um, very common for Joe to do that. His cartooning style embraced that idea of he, did the, he wrote the limericks and the taglines and then he also illustrated um, the work. So it's pretty cool to have a dad who did stuff like that for you, I think. Okay, next. Now Joe, um, Joe was born in Uruguay. His father, Domingo, was a classical sculptor. His older brother by two years, Luis, was a painter. In fact, his painting of President Harding is in the Capitol in Washington, D.C. Uh, he, he followed a more traditional art path than Joe in terms of that he, um, he focused more as a painter uh, than Joe who did so many different things that you'll, just, you'll see. Uh, and his father was a wonderful sculptor and you know, easily shared his knowledge about sculpting with Joe uh, as well. They lived in Uruguay for Joe's first two years. They went briefly back to Spain, which is where his father was from. His mother was French. They did meet in Uruguay, and they ended up on the east coast of the United States because Domingo was following work. Um, there were some big manufacturing companies on the east coast that produced uh, sculptural work on heroic scales, and it was the decorative elements on buildings. Um, and so he thought he would be busier as an artist on the east coast. So that family moved there. That's where Joe grew up. Uh, he, did his grade school work there, he did some art school work, but he really mentored, was mentored by his father, which he willingly did. I mean, he wanted that to happen. Um, and then eventually he started to earn an income, the first of which was working for the Boston Herald. And this is an example of an illustration that Joe would have done um, at the request of the newspaper's editors. So you can see it's signed J.J. Mora, um, this is in the days before there were photographs in newspapers. Um, that technology had not been developed yet, so it would have to be an illustration, and generally speaking, an on-the-spot, or based on something on-the-spot. So the editor would send Joe to the scene of the crime, say, you know, please do bring back some illustrations, and then those became the visuals that were in the newspaper. So he did that for several years with the Boston Herald, Next, please. And then he, I think it's buttoned down a little. Oh, no, oh, no. That's, all right. that's it. Back one more, I think. There we go. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. Okay. Um, he also was uh, employed by. Uh, publisher, book publishers, and this uh, Hans, Hans Anderson fairy tales is an example of a book that um, Joe illustrated. Of course, the fairy tales are kind of um, timeless, but what publishers would do is, you know, after a certain period of years, they were looking for a new audience for the same material. One of the ways to freshen it up was to have a different person illustrate those stories. So Joe um, did that on and off for about 10 years. Um, he did those kinds of illustrations. And he, there's probably half a dozen different, even 12 different books that Joe illustrated um, over that time. 
jumping forward a little bit, but I, this is a nice comparison to the Bologna that I showed you. Uh, he also did a, a cartoon series for the Boston Herald uh, called Animal Dumb. And this was a few years later, but this is typical of what was featured on Sundays in the Boston Herald. It was a full page. The cartoons in those days were the full page. Got the whole thing. And instead of chopped up with three or four different artists work, Joe would do the drawings and he would write the limericks that went along with them as well. Every week for about a full 52 weeks. Um, and again, it was a good source of income for Joe. Um, there is a little gap between the book illustrations and Animal Dumb, but we'll fill that in um, in just a second. An example, um, I'm going to, you're going to see a lot of what I would call personal work in terms of personalized, um, but I also want you to know that as an art student, he could draw with the best of them. And it was that, that's often quoted idea is that you have to learn how to draw before you can learn how to undraw. So, so. And so Joe, th this is just typical again of um, something while he was growing up that he could you know, do these wonderful, wonderful pencil drawings 